Welcome to Cheddar Big News. Today is Thursday, November 8th, 2018. This is your source for right now. I'm Hannah Doba. And now the big stories. A mass shooting in California leaves at least 12 people dead, including a police officer. Police say the gunman is also dead. The borderline bar and grill was packed with college students when the chaos started. According to the Borderline's website, it was country night and they were offering line dancing lessons. Police say the suspect burst in, opened fire and threw smoke bombs into the crowd. And, and the gunman was throwing smoke grenades all over the place. I saw him point to the back of the cash register, and he just started kept he just kept firing. I ran out the front door. I hear chairs being thrown out the window. People were trying to get out the window, and the gunman went to the he went behind the cash register. He kept there was probably 12 shots before I got out the front door. Just terrifying moments. Police say a sheriff's department sergeant was shot and killed as he responded to the bar. Witnesses say they hid in bathrooms, crawl spaces in the attic, and closets to escape all that gunfire. Others used bar stools to break windows to get out of the bar. Police say at least 10 to 15 people rushed themselves to the hospital. The question is, Thousand Oaks to the Safe Committee, what do I make of this? I make that it's a horrific incident. It's part of the horrors that are happening in, in our country and everywhere. And I think it's impossible to put any logic or any sense to the senseless. At this point, police have not released the identity of the victims or the shooter. All we know, and we just learned this moments ago, is that he is a 29-year-old man. The president tweeted this morning his prayers for families impacted and his appreciation for law enforcement. The fate of the Russia investigation into President Trump and the 2016 election is now in question. Not because of the firing of Attorney General Jeff Sessions, but because of who is replacing him, at least for the time being. President Trump broke with protocol by naming Matthew Whitaker as acting Attorney General and not Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Rosenstein took over the Mueller probe after Sessions recused himself because of his involvement in the Trump campaign. This is just the latest high-profile departure from the White House in under two years. The list includes two national security advisors, three communications directors, the press secretary, secretary of state, chief of staff, and several other cabinet secretaries. We will have much more on Sessions' resignation coming up in just a few minutes in a report from Washington. CNN reporter Jim Acosta was banned from the White House after his fiery exchange yesterday with President Trump. Hundreds of miles away, though. They're hundreds and hundreds of you miles away. That, that's not an invasion. Should, honestly, uh, you know what? Away. That, that's I not an invasion. Should, honestly, uh, I think you should let me run the country. You run CNN. All right. And if you did it well, your ratings well, let me would be ask, much better. If I, if I okay, may that's ask enough. one other question, Mr. President, if I may. That's well, enough. I was going to ask one of the, the other folks. That's had, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, Mr. Excuse President, me. That's enough. Mr. President, I had one other Peter, question, if I may ask, on, on the Russia investigation. Are you concerned that that you may have I'm not concerned about anything with you the may Russian investigation because it's a hoax. Are you, That's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? After the presidential news conference, Acosta tweeted the Secret Service took away his hard pass, preventing him from entering the White House for his 8 o'clock report. Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders said the White House would not tolerate Acosta's actions, saying he put his hands on an intern and was disrespectful to other reporters asking questions. Acosta called the accusations a lie. This, of course, is not the first time he has directly challenged the president and the press secretary. The president called him rude and said he reports fake news and is the enemy of the people. It may have taken some time, but utility workers in the Florida panhandle say power is now restored to everyone after Hurricane Michael. This was the biggest job many electrical workers have ever had to do there. Entire communities, such as Mexico Beach and Panama City Beach, were devastated by the Category 4 storm that tore through the state last month. Nearly 400,000 homes and businesses lost power in Florida as a result. But now for the homes that are still standing, the lights are back on thanks to the Herculean efforts by the utility companies. NASA's planned mission to launch a satellite from an airplane will likely go ahead later today after a technical glitch delayed the launch early Wednesday. The satellite, which will probe Earth's atmosphere at the edge of space, is housed on the undercarriage of the massive Star Glazer L-1011 
plane. The carrier plane has already taken off from Cape Canaveral on Wednesday when the issue was detected on the Peg Pegasus XL rocket. This is just another delay for the mission, which was originally slated for December of 2017. ICON, as it's called, is a $252 million mission to study the uppermost level of Earth's atmosphere. The satellite will orbit about 360 miles above Earth and track how Earth's winds and those from the sun affect our as atmospheric layer. After the Republican Party took hold of the Senate, the president held a controversial presser. We just showed you some moments from it and later erupted on Twitter announcing the resignation of Attorney General Jeff Sessions. J.D. Durkin is live at the White House to break it all down for us. I, we always say it's a busy day, J.D., but in the last 24 hours, I feel like it's crazier than usual. It's a busy life here, Hannah. I think that's the best way to describe it. Now, it is interesting that you know that the press conference came before this rather high-profile and sudden announcement of Attorney General Jeff Sessions essentially being ousted. Certainly, that was no, uh, not an accident, by the way, that was designed, nor the fact that it all is coming officially just one day after the 2018 midterm elections. But, of course, Jeff Sessions is out and enter stage right, Iowa lawyer Matthew Whitaker. Now, yesterday here on uh, Cheddar Big News, I know we took a closer look at some of Matthew Whitaker's prior uh, CNN appearances, right, which really indicate what this Iowa-based barrister happens to think about the scale and scope of the Robert Mueller investigation. Well, get this. On Twitter, a guy by the name of John Q. Barrett, who was on CNN with Matthew Whitaker last year, began to write a Twitter thread about his exchange, about what he learned about the man who's now serving as attorney general. And check out this tweet. John Q. Barrett, former CNN guest, says this. Whitaker told me in June 2017 that he was flying out from Iowa to New York City to be on CNN regularly because he was hoping to be noticed as a Trump defender and through that to get a Trump judicial appointment back in Iowa. So here, Hannah, it appears at least appears, again, it's not like confirmed reporting. This is just what uh, a former colleague of his has, the, who was booked alongside him at CNN, a fellow guest says, uh, it appears if Whitaker wanted a judicial job, essentially went on primetime cable news to audition and landed the role of the lifetime in the form of being our nation's next uh, attorney general. Of course, uh, when it comes to things that Whitaker has said, or has written about the Mueller probe. He has repeatedly questioned the scale and scope of what Robert Mueller is investigating. Uh, he has largely argued that the investigation itself from the DOJ from the top down should be significantly railed in. He even indicated that any investigation into Trump organization finances would simply be a bridge too far. Uh, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, the Democrat, had to say this in a statement about the announcement of Mr. Whitaker. Schumer says this, given his previous comments advocating defunding and imposing limitations on the Mueller investigation. Mr. Whitaker should recuse himself from its oversight for the duration of his time as acting attorney general. So perhaps here, Hannah, uh, if you take the testimony of John Q. Barrett for everything it's worth here, it seems if Matthew Whitaker, Whitaker just kind of wanted a job and figured out the way to get noticed. And wow, did he ever get one? Hannah. Get Get noticed, you did, J.D., and you mentioned the timing. So the Sessions controversy is coming in the light of Election Day. Do we have any updates on the midterms? Yeah, well, there's a handful of races that have still officially yet to be called because of various state rules and provisions, Hannah, which actually mean that the process kind of gets drawn out uh, by a couple of days. Five, uh, 538's recent estimate says Democrats have taken back, as of right now, 37 House seats. Remember, they needed 23, so uh, they did better kind of than the base that they needed to. Uh, but in terms of President Trump losing 37 Senate, or, or, excuse me, 37 House seats, uh, it's not nearly as bad as President Obama suffered back in 2010. Of course, that was the self-described shellacking when the Democrats lost 63 seats that year. Obama at the time saying voters were frustrated with the economy. He was forced to work with John Boehner on a path forward. So this week here, Hannah, perhaps not really a historic repudiation of the president uh, here in Washington. A few states that haven't been called, California's 48th, Harley Ruda over the longtime Republican incumbent uh, and controversial one at that. Dana Rohrbacher, Ruda up right now, 1.5 percentage points with... Um, 
yeah, the, the margins about it's less than 3,000 votes between the two of them. And the last one that's of real big implications, the Arizona Senate race. We still don't know who the next senator for the great state of Arizona will be, the Republican Martha McSally or Kristen Sinema, uh, the Democrat. Right now, it's about one percentage point that separates the two. However, 600,000 ballots remain uncounted. That's nearly 25 percent of the overall vote. Arizona has weird rules where you can show up on Election Day and hand in your ballot or mail it as late as Election Day, which means Arizona voters are well used to this process by now, Hannah. It will frequently take several days or even several weeks, so we may not know who the next senator for Arizona is for at least quite some time. Hannah. 600,000 votes. J.D., thank you so much. We'll make sure to check in just a little bit later with J.D. from the White House in the next half hour.